You were right and I was wrong there. Did you ever expect to hear me say such a thing? Isla Nublar was just a showroom, something for the tourists. Site B was the factory floor. That was on Ina Sauna. Okay, so there's another island with dinosaurs, no fences this time, and you want to send people in. And, and who are these four lunatics you're trying to con into this? Well, there's Nick Van Owen, our video expert. We have Eddie Carr, our master mechanic. We have our animal behavior specialist. And I was hoping perhaps you might be the fourth. Something has survived. Will you? The Lost World Jurassic Park. Greetings. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. You all know who I am. This is a review I have wanted to get here on the channel for many, many years. For pretty much as long as I've been on YouTube here doing videos, I wanted to always review these Lost World Series 1 humans. I just never had all the figures. I was missing Sarah Harding's net launcher, and I was missing all the gear for Peter Ludlow. Peter Ludlow and the Engine Hunters will be coming in later, but for right now, we're going to be taking a look at the Lost World, Kenner, Series 1, Humans and Hatchlings, Malcolm's team. So here we go, starting things off, we're going to take a look at Eddie Carr, the master mechanic from Malcolm's team. Eddie would always be the one who's repairing the vehicles here, fixing them up. So they're good to go after you've had a run-in maybe with the adult Pachycephalosaurus. Let's look at his hatchling. He comes with this little green Triceratops hatchling. Mainly just this forest green color. He has some white sprinkled in there around his eyes and on his underbelly. JP Site B mark right here on his leg. Not much to say, just normal little hatchling. Kind of like the pose this one's in. For a new Kenner Triceratops hatchling, it's not bad. I enjoy. I always enjoyed this one. So you get a cool little hatchling. Eddie comes with some gear we have seen before here. Can you guess where this piece is from? Yeah, you guessed it. It's the grappling hook launcher from Harpoon Harrison here. Just repainted this gray color, and instead of being orange, it's now this yellowy color. Same, you got the string that can wrap around that piece there. So unlike the Harpoon Harrison version of this, you don't get the other spear piece to load in here. You just only get the grappling hook claw piece, which is for grappling onto dinosaur's legs. I'm not really sure exactly what that's going to do here or how that's going to protect this guy or this is going to help defend himself. But I always use this as the winch to the ground tracker here. If you watch my toy movie that I made, I know plenty of other people have done stuff like that with these type of accessories. You use this as the winch that he hooks onto the Fleetwood RV. So yeah, this could be whatever you want it to be. I used it as a winch. I also used it sometimes as like a grappling hook for my characters to climb up or down a, a cliff side or something. Uh, whatever you wish it to be. But you load it in and you press the yellow trigger button here to fire. Comes unraveled off there when you shoot it. Get some good distance. You get a lot of string here, so just do be careful. That's a lot of string. Just do be careful that doesn't get tangled up. And yeah, that's his grappling hook. Eddie Carr can hold this in a very similar fashion as Harpoon Harrison. I found you can kind of get him to hold it in each hand and it looks normal. Uh, this way, you can switch hands and put that piece on that side. Rotate that piece down to look like he's holding that. And yeah, I can never really seem to get his hand around this nicely and then still be attached to that. But I'm sure if you like finangled with it, you can get it somewhat. But I mean, for the most part, you can kind of just like rest it there and it looks like he's holding this piece. I believe on the back of the figure's packaging, he just, he holds it in just this one hand like that. But I mean, you definitely have some options for how you want to pose this in him, and you hold it this way, that way, here. A lot of different ways you can get him to hold this weapon, which is nice. Hook onto like that, so lots of options here for posing this accessory in his hand. Not looking a whole lot like Eddie Carr from the movie. Um, mainly he just got this beige color throughout the majority of his outfit here. Has some sunglasses dangling on his chest, some rope here around his shoulder, and some green up here. A brown belt, brown boots. Um, kind of odd, he has a Dr. Grant-like cowboy hat going on here. I think maybe this was done just to make him look more appealing for kids to want to actually buy the figure, because maybe some kids wouldn't want to actually buy a bald action figure. I'm not sure what the reason is. It could have been a multitude of different reasons for why they gave this guy a hat. You have the JP Site B mark here on his arm. I always kind of liked the way this figure looked. He definitely looks like he's going on some dinosaur safari into the jungle. Almost looks like Indiana Jones in a way to me. But yeah, a solid Eddie Carr figure. Now this man was a goddamn hero in the movie. 
he did not deserve to die the way he did, getting ripped in half by the two T-Rexes. It goes without saying, any car from Series 1 here is definitely better than the Series 2 version. I enjoy the Series 1 version a lot more. He just looks more natural. And like I said, he looks like he's going on a dinosaur safari. This guy, I don't know what they were thinking with the orange here. This is... <laughs> the Series 2 version here was kind of a repaint of the Bullet Blaster Dr. Grant. He's got like this hockey looking boxing glove pad here on his arm. Some chain mail. But mainly just this fluorescent orange color with these almost kind of gray camo stripes on the figure. I by no means hate the Series 2 Eddie Carr figure from The Lost World. Uh, I just feel like I'm more nostalgic for this one, even though this one's really common. It isn't even that expensive if you go try to track him down today. This guy is a little bit more pricey, obviously. But yeah, I, I really like this figure. I always liked Eddie Carr, especially in this action figure form. They did him justice here. And that's Eddie Carr. Let's check out the next character. Here we have Nick Van Owen. Nick was always one of my favorite characters from the movie. I mean, obviously behind Malcolm. Malcolm was my favorite. But I remember being a kid and I always really liked Vince Vaughn in the movie. Maybe it was just his character being a, a photographer. And back in 1997, like the coolest thing I believe was a Polaroid camera maybe. Not everyone had cameras on their cell phone like today. Just the idea of going on one of these Jurassic Park dinosaur islands with a camera to take photos of these creatures that no one has seen before. I just remember that being really special. And I don't know, I, I always wanted to be that guy. These images are incredible, legendary. Wow. But yeah, let's take a look at his hatchling here. Nick Van Owen comes with this little Pteranodon hatchling. Very nicely colored here. It's looking like Steelbeak from The Lost World. We reviewed that figure. You have the JP Site B mark right here on his wing. The wings are not bendable bendable, but they're rubbery kind of a little bit. There's a little bit of play there. I wouldn't try to bend them and mess with them too much, but there is a little bit of play. I really love the blue here on this figure, especially on Steel Beak, but it's nice here on this little hatchling. Again, Kenner making hatchlings that match their adult counterparts that you could also buy, so this little hatchling's nice. I do know they did variants of this figure. I believe there's a variant where he has a hat, and it's like this green color here on his sleeves and stuff, and he had like a green hat with a JP or Site B logo. I don't think I ever had that variant of him with the hat. I think I always liked this version anyway better without the hat because he didn't have a hat in the movie. He comes with a paralyzing spray blaster, <laughs> Dino Trank spray weapon, the flamethrower. It's the exact same spray weapon here, the squirt gun. Press these two back tanks, fill it up with water, press it again to fire. The only slight difference here is um, the tube is not see-through plastic anymore. It's all black. Uh, which is all right, I guess. The tube here on my Nick Van Owen, this tube feels like it's got a lot more play in it. My other ones for my Nedry seem like they were really kind of tight and didn't want to bend, but there's a lot of wiggle room here with this. It like bends really easily. You can kind of see. So while I never really used this water feature back as a kid, I'll admit, I always did think it was cool. I think I prefer the Series 1 and 2 Nedry just for this, the clear plastic tube. The black tube here isn't bad, but I, th I like the see-through plastic because when you're squirting it, you can see the water shooting out of this and going through it. With this black, you're not going to be able to see it, so a little bit of a downside, I guess. You can take his little flamethrower piece here and store it on the side of the backpack when he's not using it. Not like it's a huge playability feature, but it can kind of store here on the side, so if he's not using it and he's, you just have him using his camera only you don't want him to have a hand on the spray weapon. Comes with the same backpack that was also on series one and two Dennis Nedry. It's just it's brown instead of silver. Let's take this off. Just like before, the flamethrower piece can come out of the backpack if you just want him to have this generic backpack piece on. I remember I used to do that sometimes. If they didn't have the flamethrower, I just would put these on my Kenner figures to make it seem like they had more gear on them for their adventure. Not that this is not that this can really hold much else here in the back besides these two flamethrower tank pieces, but yeah, all up to your imagination. So yeah, you guys know how I feel about this little weapon accessory. Very much enjoyed this back in 1997. Nick also comes with a little handheld camera here. I always thought this thing was like a phaser gun of sorts. It could honestly be whatever you want it to be though, but it's a handheld camera. A very 
awkward and strange looking handheld camera. I'm guessing that's the lens you'd be looking through when you're recording. You got some little stuff going on there, squiggly lines. But yeah, that just sits in hand. Doesn't really look like Vince Vaughn all that much from the movie, but I mean, for action figure form here, it's not terrible. It's all right. JP Site B right here on his shoulder. This light, almost bluish green undershirt with a yellow vest. He's got some browns here around his vest and on his back. He's got beige pants. He's got a knife here on his leg, similar to Baldoon from the earlier Kenner stuff. And brown boots. I always very much enjoyed this figure. I know he may not have been one of the most popular characters or everyone's favorite character in the movie, but I liked this figure and I liked Vince Vaughn in the movie, so I'm pretty nostalgic for this Nick Van Owen figure from The Lost World. It's a little bit difficult for me to choose whether I like the Series 1 version better or the Series 2 version. I kind of think I prefer the Series 2 version a little bit just because the, the yellow is gone and I feel like the yellow is a little bit too bright and vibrant. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a toss-up. I know this figure is like incredibly rare and a lot of money, so uh, probably best for most collectors or people just to go with this one because he's cheaper and more affordable. But I think they're both pretty good in their own right. I mean, I will admit, I kind of like the video camera accessory piece here, even though it's a little bit big and bulky. This video camera accessory that came with Series 2 Nick was a little bit cooler than this little handheld one, but I mean, if you have both of these figures, uh, you can have them be bringing both of these to the island. I believe, just like a lot of the Kenner stuff, you can, yeah. Series 1 Nick could also use the camera that came with Series 2 Nick, so like, you can mix and match. Going in to document it. It actually looks like a camcorder of sorts, from 1997 at least. <laughs> More than this thing, this thing looks like some type of a pistol blaster weapon. It's Nick Van Owen. We have our chaos expert up next, Ian Malcolm with launching smart missile backpack. <laughs> Comes with a little baby T-Rex hatchling in a very neutral looking pose. It's mainly just this gray color, the entire figure. It's got a black eye with a white pupil and he's got this light, light, light green around his entire back going down to his tail. I always like this hatchling. You have the little JP mark on his leg. You even can see the bandages here. Kind of cool that that's on this little figure. This hatch thing was also repainted for the Series 2 Eddie Carr. This one looks like Diablo from Primal Rage, or Diablo's hatchling offspring from Primal Rage. But yeah, this was probably one of my favorite Rex hatchlings. Not the red one necessarily here, but just this, this mold right here was probably my favorite. It's definitely better than the Rex hatchling that came with Muldoon from Series 1, 1993. But it's a hatchling, so there's not like a whole lot of playability options here. So, I mean, it is what it is. This is probably one of my favorites in, hatch in terms of hatchlings that we've gotten. Just like the first go around, Ian Malcolm sporting all black. He's got a little brown machete here on his waistline. Got some OD green looking binoculars here on his chest. You have the JP Sight B mark. Got some black gloves and the black hair and the black sunglasses. It's kind of difficult for me to pick my favorite Malcolm figure. Um, the 1997 child inside of me is still saying that this is my Malcolm. I do have some nostalgic feelings for the 1994 Malcolm. I, I feel like this one is my favorite just because so many memories with this, this one in particular. This is my one from 1997 and he's still in pretty damn good condition for the most part. Uh, he does have a little bit of paint wear here on the binoculars. Yeah, you can see he's got some little paint loss there on the binoculars. But considering the Jurassic Adventures me and this guy went on, he's in good condition. He comes with a launching smart missile backpack. Kind of a strange accessory. Something we haven't seen before. I like this backpack just because the way you get this on, you just take this piece and you kind of just click it on. Or it clicks on and off like very, very easily. You can see this little piece here on his uh, back right there. It helps keep the backpack in place. So yeah, you can see like that little piece on his backside there, keeping the backpack sturdy. But really easy to remove on and off. It's really nice. So what you're supposed to do with this is you load it in, and then you take these two rocket pieces. I don't even know what to call these little pieces here on the side that jut out. 
push that down to keep them held. And once you have those two pieces locked in like that, you're ready to go on an adventure. Boop, 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 boop. But then when you want to engage this into firing mode, like, oh, look, it's a Stegosaurus. It's going after Sarah Harding. We got to fire the missile. Now it's ready to fire and press this other black button down here to shoot. I always had a lot of fun with this little backpack accessory and it's something we haven't seen before. So it's new. I always liked it. You don't even have to, you don't even have to use this other piece. This is just for a little bit more playability option. You can't fire like that, obviously with those two pieces down. So you got to press this button up here first to release them. And then you can press it again and it fires. It's a little bit easier than some of the other Kenner backpacks that we've looked at with these strap pieces and having to stretch these out and get them in those holes. Uh, this one you just like snap on, snap off. It's really easy. And that's Ian Malcolm. Comes with a pretty fun little backpack here with a cool little feature. The little safety mechanism to release the rocket and then you shoot the rocket. Pretty great for helping you defend yourself against the Rexes or whatever other dinos you encounter on your journey. His little hatchling's great. I remember loving the crap out of this little Rex hatchling. A lot of the human figures can just like pick up the hatchlings kind of in a way like this and you can transport them to the mobile command center or whatever have you. And I bet you all thought I was going to forget this figure. Da, 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 yes, Ian Malcolm's daughter, Kelly Malcolm. Uh, this figure was sadly left out of my toy movie just because in 2010, 2011, when I was making that project, I didn't have this figure and I really didn't feel like spending $30 just to get this Kelly Malcolm figure. Eventually... Later on down the road, I got her. I wish I had her at the time. I kind of wish I didn't cut her out of the movie. She deserved to be in the movie. My toy movie, just because she's a Kenner figure. She's a pretty alright looking Kenner figure for the most part. A little bit of a shame that she was an exclusive to the Mobile Command Center, which back in the late 90s, I remember trying, my parents trying to find that Mobile Command Center, and it was like damn near impossible. But yeah, that's Dr. Malcolm and Kelly Malcolm. I know she's not really a series one figure here that you could buy. She was an exclusive. She deserves here to be in this video, just like she deserved to be in my toy movie. Now let's check out the last member of the team. Here we go, the final member of Malcolm's team, Dr. Sarah Harding, the animal behavior specialist. This figure, folks, was ended up becoming the series two Nick Van Owen of series one. Fetches the highest price tag out of any of the other humans here. Just the hatchling figures alone can be pretty expensive. So just be warned, she, she's pretty pricey. She's a great Kenner figure here though, and I may be overstepping saying this, so please let me know in the comments, but this might be my favorite Kenner female human action figure from any Jurassic Park toy line. I love Ellie Sattler and all, but this just, the face on this looks so dang close to Julianne Moore from the movie for action figure form. It's great. Really great. Like This really almost looks like Sarah Harding. <laughs> Maybe that's why it became super rare. She has light brown hair and a ponytail. She has a red undershirt here, you can see. A JP Site B mark there on her sleeve. Tan vest, green shorts, and dark brown boots. Out of all the Lost World Series 1 humans, she kind of resembles her character in the movie the best out of any of the other characters here. Uh, Ian Malcolm's alright too, but I feel like the award should go to this figure for the looking like her movie counterpart the most. I mean, for action figure form here, I mean, I don't know how much closer you could possibly get it. Mainly in the face, maybe not the colors in her outfit here, but I mean, I, I really like her outfit. She comes with this little camera accessory. It doesn't really do anything. It just kind of rests around her neck. Kind of put it around the ponytail piece like that. It's a little bit, not super hard plasticky here, so I wouldn't mess with it too much, but a little snapshot camera. A welcomed little accessory here, considering she and Malcolm's team were going in to document the dinosaurs and take photos. So really cool that this that rests around her neck. I remember this accessory being one of like the must-have accessories with this figure. Like her net trap thing is okay, but this accessory here is what I was mainly interested in. I remember when I first tried to find this figure, I was like, does she have the camera? She better have the camera piece around her neck. She truly is a great figure here. Her little stegosaurus hatchling, also another favorite of mine. Maybe not the color selection here. It's just got this like peachy skin looking color that morphs into like this reddish dark maroon. This is another wonderful Stegosaurus hatchling for the Kenner stuff, in my opinion, if you ask me. So yeah, we get two really amazing Stegosaurus hatchlings from the Kenner lines here. Uh, I still prefer the Series 2 one here just a little bit more just because it matches the Series 1 Stego from Jurassic Park. But this one here from The Lost World is really great too. JP Site B mark here on his leg. 
black pupils. Not really much else here going on with this guy, but the pose may not be the greatest. It's a little bit awkward looking, the way he's facing and stuff, but I just wish it was painted a different color, almost like the Lost World Series 1 Stegosaurus there in the background. So it almost would have been like this Stegosaurus and how he matches the Series 1 Jurassic Park Stego. It would be cool if this one matched the Lost World Stegosaurus right there. But this is still a welcome hatchling regardless here, regardless of his paint scheme. I always loved him. Said can't go wrong with hatchlings. Sour Harding comes with a net launcher here. A little bit similar to the one we reviewed already on Paul Kirby from Jurassic Park 3, if you watched my review there on that. Kind of similar feature here. This one's a little bit better of a design than the one on Paul Kirby. 1997 Hasbro made in China, trademark underneath. You get a good size net here for catching hatchling dinosaurs and stuff. It's got these two red popsicle looking sticks here on both sides that are plasticky. So this is how I do it. I roll the ends around these popsicle sticks just a little bit, not a super amount. And then here on the net launcher, you want to put the popsicle sticks here and then down here on the bottom in this fashion. And they rest there. And then just like the Paul Kirby net launcher we reviewed, you got to kind of keep your fingers here on the platform to keep it sturdy. And then you, with some force, you push down on this launching pad and it shoots. Here we go. Let's see if we can get this horde of combis a little bit. You got to kind of keep your finger here on the base to keep it on the ground, help keep it on the ground. But you press this little launching button to, with a little bit of force, not a super amount of force, but a little bit of force to launch the net. Didn't catch anything. Like, I feel like a lot of these net launching features never really catch anything. It's mainly like you launch it and then I feel like you've got to use your imagination yourself. Like, oh, he landed on him and it captured him. But I will say, while maybe not the greatest, this is vastly better than the one that appeared on Paul Kirby. Keep like a finger on one of these edges to help keep it on the ground when you flick it. Because sometimes when you flick it, the whole bottom piece just flips up. So you got to kind of help keep it steady. If you didn't want to use your finger to push the button down for the launching feature, you could always have it as one of the characters, like Sarah Harding or anyone just comes over and steps on it. Oh, that was a bad demonstration. Off the ground. And yeah, boom. That was a good one. Uh, just didn't hit anything, but that was a good launch. So out of all the net launchers we've re reviewed here on my channel, net launching backpacks and all that stuff, this might be my favorite little net launching accessory piece here. While it still might not be the greatest in terms of how it actually functions and works, it is nice for hatchlings and capture some hatchlings. The net launcher is a nice addition to add some playability options in. The hatchling is also a nice great addition to this set just because you can all reenact the scene when she's trying to take a photo of the baby stego. Remember, we're here to preserve and document, not interact. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go pet this cute baby stegosaurus and hopefully the parents don't go aggro on us. While this camera piece of gear here doesn't really serve it much of a purpose, you can kind of get it to sit in her hand here a little bit, not a whole lot. You can kind of like get it up like that and get it to stay if you played with it enough. So I really don't have much negative to say here about the Sarah Harding from Series 1. It's another awesome addition here into the Lost World and to Malcolm's team. I very much enjoy her hatchling. Just wish the colors were a little bit different, but it doesn't bring it down at, at all. The color of her gear and just her outfit I love, and I love the camera accessory. A lot of stuff about this figure I very much enjoy and like a lot. It kills me that some of these figures retailed for $5 back in 1997, and this figure now is like $60 to $85 if it has all the parts and depending on the condition, like... Hatchling alone sometimes is crazy priced. That's Sarah Harding. I recommend you check her out if you don't have her in your collection or you've been on the fence about adding her to your collection. Let me tell you, you will not be sorry adding this one into your line of Kenner toys if you don't have her already. She's, she's wonderful. Fantastic. So there you have it. Malcolm's team from The Lost World by Kenner. Series 1, 1997. I may sound a little bit biased here in this review just because... This is my childhood right here in front of me. I was six years old when these things came out. I was obsessed with them, and now, 20-something plus years later, I still love the absolute hell out of these things. <laughs> they get a recommendation from me that you check them out. Eddie, Nick, and Malcolm shouldn't be too hard to track down complete for a reasonable price. Kelly Malcolm, being from the Mobile Command Center, she was an exclusive, so she'll be upwards of like 30 bucks, maybe more. 
I haven't looked at her prices recently. Sarah Harding is usually always really, really, really expensive. So I appreciate you guys joining me for this little review. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and thumbs the video up. And don't forget to tune in for the next review, the Engine Hunters. I don't get it. It says engine on the, on the side of that chopper. I don't get that. Why, why wouldn't Hammond send two teams?